So my name is Pierre Lombardi. This is my chemistry demo. So uh, to begin, I just want to ask you guys, what are some properties of metals? I'm gonna write this on the board. Anyone can answer. It's all a state of the art. Is that readable? Properties of metals. Reactive. Reactive and how? Reactive. What about the transition? Reactive. What else? Loop. Oh. <laughs> uh, solid. It's a solid. Uh, it's solid works. What else? How are they reactive? What she said before. Reactive. Just the different ways they can be reactive. Are they all equally reactive? No. No. Copper. Well, not as reactive. So copper. Yeah. Where, where's copper located? Element twenty nine. What group? They're what type of metals? Transition. Transition. Okay. Now, what type of metals are reactive? Alcohol. What are they reactive to? Water. Okay. That's what we're going to be talking about today. All right. All right. There you go. So, does anyone know why they're reactive to water? H two. Yes. What about you? I'm trying to think of the <laughs> Richard. Richard. Just read a bone comment. That's here. Why are they down? Less than anything. Okay. Guess what I don't know this, but okay, they're reactive because of the process in which the metal takes out the H2 from the H2O, all right? So, the reaction, so here's a formula. <laughs> so, this is a metal. So, plus H2O. A uh, hydroxide and hydrogen. Okay? State. Okay. So then you got bouncy. So two, two, two. OH right. minus H plus. Hmm? OH minus H. OH minus and then it's H2. OH minus. No, no, no. no. Yeah. It's H2. H2. Yeah. Uh, there it goes. Anyways, um, so why it reacts violently when it is put in water is because um, heat is generated when the H2 is taken out of the H2O. So um, you guys know how it is how it goes from least to most reactive. There are two things that determine these most reactive. Height of the period. Height of the period. What else? Between the alkali metals and alkali earth metals, which one's more reactive? Alkali. Alkali? Correct. So, if you order them from least to most, 
Beryllium. We're gonna find it. Magnesium. Lithium. Sodium. Rhodium. Strontium. Uh, barium. Uh, potassium. Rubidium. Radium. Francium. And cesium. So. That's why we're thinking this should be more reactive than this, which makes more sense. However, two things make cesium more reactive. One is that there's not enough francium on the planet to actually test this theory. Um, and two, uh, cesium, no, francium uh, is such a heavy metal that when the element gets heavier, the electrons tend to move a lot more faster and they move, to the, move towards the nucleus a lot more close closely than expected, making the electron harder to remove. So in practicality, cesium is the most reactive metal, but in theory, francium is. Okay, so today we are going to be um, looking at this element, this element, this element, and this element. Okay, so, oh, and uh, to show you when nothing happens, we're also gonna be adding zinc. That's not reactive, but that's just to show you what doesn't happen. Yeah. You guys want to come around? Okay, so this is zinc, non-reactive metal. What do you guys think is gonna happen? Oh, nothing. Watch out. Watch out. Beautiful. Uh, okay. So <laughs> suppose that. nothing happens. All right. Got that out of the way. Next, we have lithium, which third least reactive. Stand All right. So we also put phenolphthalein in it. Um, which shows the hydroxide being formed, the solution being formed, that's why it's turning pink. Uh, um, so it is, why do, you, why do you guys think it's floating, not sinking? It's a metal, supposed to be heavy. Why is it floating, not sinking? Because it's moving. Thanks. <laughs> I'll get to that in a minute. Why is it, I'll get to moving in a minute. But why do you think it's floating? Less dense. There you go. Yeah. Okay, and it's also moving. So um, there is no actual um, exact answer as to why this happens, but there's two main theories. One is based on the hydrogen as it is leaving the H2O, it is actually pushing the element around. And a second theory is that the exothermic heat is actually moving the element around. So um, as you can tell, the reason why it's taking so long to actually like disintegrate and dissolve into the water is because it doesn't generate enough heat um, fast enough, and that is also why like there's no explosion or fire. The next element we're going to be experimenting with is calcium. Calcium is the fourth least reactive metal in relativity to the alkaline and alkaline earth metals. Uh, in the video shown, we are using a grounded, shredded up calcium that we mix with the water. As you can see, as the metal reacts to the water, that it is slightly more reactive as the bubbles and the fizzing are more predominant compared to the lithium. However, as observed through the reaction with the phenolphthalein in the calcium oxide, it is a lot more cloudy and less vibrant than when compared to the lithium oxide, uh, which even had a greater onset of a pink discoloration. This could potentially be due to the fact that the calcium is in a powdered form. As you could see, remnants of the powder still um, floating above the water. This could be a potential error in the experiment as different results may uh, be produced if the calcium was a more um, solid rock form as, a as opposed to a granular form. Now the next element we are going to be experimenting with is sodium. It is the fifth least reactive of the alkaline alkaline earth metals that react with water. However, as you can see through the observations, 
that the reactions are getting a bit more aggressive now. You can see this through the white trail of sodium hydroxide that is leaving the test container, as well as you could actually hear the sodium begin to dissolve, which I'll allow you to listen to right now. The last element we're going to be experimenting with is potassium. It is the fifth most reactive element of the alkaline alkaline earth metals to react with water. This is clearly observed in the observations as it catches on fire almost immediately after making contact with the water. As observed in the video, the products of potassium and H2O to create potassium oxide and hydrogen gas is a very quick reaction lasting only about 5 to 10 seconds. Uh, this is due to the reaction generating a lot of heat as you can see with the sparks and the fire that is created upon contact. Also there is a popping and crackling sound that is created through the reaction which I'll let you listen to now. Whoa. Oh, my God. Step back. It's, it's fine. Okay, come and give me that. Elevate the elevate. That's all, folks.